Hi folks, so uh, welcome back. Um, what I have set up here is um, a, another beam problem with a distributed load. This time it's a parabolic load distri distribution. Think about like um, a snow load on a roof um, that got piled up against, you know, like as a two height roof and it got piled up against um, one side of it. Um, so that load function is h over l squared times x squared. h and l are constants. h is the maximum height of the load. l is the length of the, the beam. Um, and x varies. It's the distance from, for our case, it's going to be the distance from a, just like last time. So when you look at the function, it makes sense. Um, when x is 0, there's no load. Um, at the point um, x equals l, um, the magnitude of the load is just is h. That's the maximum. All right. So <coughs> what we what we need to do here is to uh, find the equivalent force and the location. This <laughs> it's got messed up, and the location. of the equivalent force. All right, first step is to redraw. Okay, so what we're doing is we're, these two situations, these two situations are equivalent. So, over what I've done is in the dashed lines I've put the distributed load for reference so what we want to find is the resultant load the um, equivalent load and where that equivalent load is located now intuitively you know that um, F has to be to the right because the load is you know, goes from small to big from left to right. So you know it's got to be to the right. So we can check that. That's a little check at the end um, to make sure that our answer makes sense. Okay, so to go back to our expression from um, the last video. Force is the integral from 0 to L, that total force, of the distributed load function over dx. Right, so we're first finding find total load. Okay, by finding the area under the curve. All right, so we're going to take this and we're going to substitute in what we know. Force is integral from 0 to L of h over L squared dx, or not dx, x squared dx. Okay, this is just the distributed load function. h and L are constants, so we can pull them out. So we end up with um, h l over three for the force. All right. When you do that integration, x cubed over three, you have an x cubed or an l cubed on top and an l squared on the bottom. Okay. So we've got the force. Now, where is it located? And we had this expression last time. It's a little long, but it works. The moment, okay, moment about A over force. Right, because moment is force times distance, the distance at which that uh, equivalent force acts. So when we divide those, we get the distance so substituting in x times 
the uh, distributed load function for this situation is h over l squared x squared dx and we already found the force so we're just going to do we're just going to substitute that in and I'm um, going to continue down here h and l are constants so I can pull those out from 0 to L and then it's an x cubed dx because I had an x here and an x squared here and we just carry through that denominator that doesn't change and h over L squared um, this is h um, not h x to the fourth over 4 over h l over 3 and you end up with 3 fourths l um, this is from 0 to l okay when you evaluate that okay so we've got our force we've got the distance at which it acts so if we go back to our equivalent picture What we have is, if I, I'll sketch back in, um, there, F is here, the distance from A is 3 fourths L. Okay, now, a little note here, and we're going to dive into this in a minute, but there's a point here which is called the center of mass. That force, the equivalent force, must pass. through the center of mass of the load. Okay, this is from the definition of center of mass. Okay, so center of mass, abbreviated CM, is the point at which one can consider the mass to be concentrated for an actual physical body. Now I put that last part in there because we're going to compare this to Okay, so compare to center or centroid. Okay, the centroid is the center of a geometric shape. Okay. This refers only to the geometric shape. Okay. 
right? So these two, understand the difference between these two. Okay, center of mass is where the mass of something is concentrated, and centroid is the center of a geometric figure. Now, if, if, A body has constant density then the center of mass is the same location as the centroid but constant density throughout the whole thing. If it doesn't have constant density, then that's not true. Um, if you imagine our example with that uh, snow load, um, here's our roof, and um, here's our load. Well, if you imagine that over here, all right, imagine that there is a, you know, a wall that this is butting up against here and another section of roof here. And in this area, two things were happening. The weight of the snow above it was compressing the snow in here and insulating it. And the warmth from the buildings was doing some uh, increasing the temperature. So some of it was melting. You could get an area of higher density here than out here, than out in this area. All right, so the centroid would, would be where we found it, but the center of mass would actually be farther to the right because you'd have more dense material over here and the stuff farther to the left would be less dense. All right, so um, do keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> one last thing I'd like you to look at um, you have to grab your book for this. On, um, so for, for lots of our, centroid's going to be really useful for a lot of what we do. Um, and uh, you're not going to have to calculate them. They are on page, so C, text, appendix A. No, appendix D. Appendix, I was thinking of your homework. Um, appendix D. Okay, so this, it gives um, the centroid and moment of inertia, which we'll deal with later, not right now, but just so you know, moment of inertia of various uh, geometric shapes. So um, this is, and it should be on page 487 unless you have some funky addition to the book. Um, but it's table D3 is the key one there. <clears throat> and if you go to page uh, 488, the one, two, three, fourth one down um, has... Um, the equation for um, our example. Okay, so if you look at if you look at that, it gives the uh, centroid location directly. Um, you don't have to do the calculation that we did. Um, it, it's right there. So for some for some common areas, it's it's there that have constant density. All right, so good information. I'll look through that, and um, next time we'll we'll hit a, a more complicated example. All right, so see you soon.